What's up, witches? It's Witches and Nakora, and welcome back to Lonely Souls. In the last episode I did, which was the Taro route, I said that we'd be coming back at a future date to do the route to get Shin's ending, and, well, I decided to go ahead and do it right now. I mean, I love Okaruto so much. She's so misunderstood, just because she's different, and... People think that she's creepy or weird. Well, the day I'm recording this song is actually World Goth Day. And I myself loved gothic sub subculture. But where's my ma where's my words today? I do not know how to English. But, yeah, I'm recording this on World Goth Day for a reason. Because you got to respect all the beauty the people of the, of the shadows have given us. So I'm going to go ahead and hit new game. And we're going to fast forward through all this. So we can get to, uh, let's see, where's the skip button? Here we go. Uh, start the censored version, of course. And we're going to zoom ahead to Shin's, or not Shin, uh, Oka's first, uh, branch out here. Are we gonna hide? Class 3 2 is right next to the staircase. I can make it before them. Maybe my teacher was still there. She could stop them. It was empty. But I could still hide somewhere. As long as I did so before the Bossy sisters would arrive. Uh, under the teacher's desk. There she is! Saki and her sister were already inside, and I was in plain sight. So pathetic. I actually expected you to try to hide somewhere. Guess you're too stupid even for that. They were taking their time. Maybe I could still run. I didn't make it in time. That's a fast girl. Saki so pulled me back by my shirt. It crashed onto the wall behind me and fell down. Sitting by the wall, I looked up to see the demons before me. I wanted to escape now. I need to stand a chance against us. Now what'd I do with you? I heard Saki burst into, into delighted laughter. Did you hear that, Inkyu? She thinks she actually hurt us. As if I care. I felt the first blow on my face. She wasn't gonna go easy on me. Come on, Inkyu. Let's show her why you shouldn't mess with us. I felt Inkyu kick my side. I fell down and laying on the ground took all of their blows. It grew monotone after a while. I could, almost couldn't feel any of it. After a long time, Saki spat on the ground next to me. I tell that punish those who disobey me. You're nothing but dirt compared to me. Remember that. They left. They just, they just left me alone. You know what? It's not worth any more time than they already spent on me. Still trying to recover from their violent hit, I stood up hesitantly. I felt so dizzy. I needed to go home. I would faint soon if I stayed here for any longer. My mother asked me about the barely visible cuts on my face when I got home, but I said nothing about it. I didn't want to worry her. It was better that way. Aww. Man, the Batsu sisters are such pains in the butt. I don't see why they're not expelled for bullying. I hate them. I mean, sure, their names are awesome and I like their design, but they're total bully. I don't like it. What time is it? I should be getting up. Well, let's see if we can skip ahead. Yeah, we can skip ahead right now. Um, I'm busy. No way I was letting go of my responsibilities. I had a club meeting to attend, and I had to make that clear, even if he was being nice to me. Thank you for the offer, but my club has a meeting on lunchtime, which I have to participate in. Oh. Without a word, I turned on my heel and left, heading towards my locker. Nothing would tear me away from my club. It's where I belonged, and 
He didn't care what other, what other people thought of it. I passed Shin Higaku, my club maiden friend, on my way to class. We greeted each other quickly before separating to go to our classrooms. Aww. As the usual, I was sitting in one of the chairs in my club, reading a book. I was the first one to arrive, so I had some time to be alone and just relax. It was then I heard the door open. Someone was inside. I looked to see my clubmate, Supana Churu, standing in the doorway. I smiled at her when she waved at me, cheerfully, like she hasn't seen me in ages. Supana was definitely the most social person in the club. She was always so enthusiastic and trustworthy. There was no way to dislike her. She and I weren't that close, but we talked sometimes. The next ones who arrived were Daku and Chojo. We didn't say a word to each other, but nod politely at me. And then Supana, who was quite hard to ignore after coming inside. Daku was nice, but quite shy, and didn't really talk much. Chojo was similar, except I didn't get my chance to get to know him. He rarely even spoke to anyone. Before the door closed behind Chojo, I saw a hand push it open and again and Kakuma Jutsu appeared in the room. I liked Kakuma as well, but there was something about her that always bothered me. Her practical way of thinking made it harder for me to become closer to her. Besides, she was a loner as well, so there's no wonder why she rarely opened up to others. The only other person I ever saw her hang out with was Sapana. Maybe her energetic nature balanced Kakuma's logic. It was the best proof that opposites attracted. They seemed to be really close friends, and I trusted Sipana. She knew who she was wanted as a friend. Instinctively, I caught my breath as the last person arrived. Shin. His tall, slightly intimidating figure always made me feel cold. It was a kind of effect that he wanted on pe to have on people. I could tell. I knew him well enough to know that, as I had quite a few chances to speak to Shin. He was the first one to join my club and help me convince a few first year students to join it, which, to be honest, wasn't an easy task. Shin was so dedicated to the club, it was mainly because of him anyone wanted to even join it. That's when the occult club was officially started. I will never forget the headmaster's expression when we showed him a list of students who signed up to join it. And he had no choice but to accept it. As for Shin, he was... I couldn't even choose the right word to describe him. Even though I was sure I was the closest person in the entire school to a friend for him, he barely spoke to me when it wasn't necessary, and rarely show showed any sign of emotion. Most, if not all, of the Occult Club's members had a bad reputation at school, but for Shin, it was understandable. Students tended to avoid him, as he was much more impulsive to me and was rather quick to anger. Even though he was sometimes really difficult to deal with, I trusted him enough to grant him control over the club whenever I was gone. Even if I were to pick someone I could call a friend, it would most likely be him. So even I felt like I barely knew anything about him. He was just a one big mystery to me, even after all the time we spent together. So maybe it wasn't wise to simply approach him right now. I could use this time to learn something. Uh, I think I'll talk to Shin. Slowly, I stood up and approached Shin. He watched me closely without a word. Like an animal judging its darkness weaknesses before attacking. I know that he seemed a bit anxious today. Hi. He was silent, but he looked at me with a pained expression on his face. Something must have been bothering him. Perhaps it was merely one of those days where he didn't feel like talking. It happened a lot with him. Maybe I was the source of the problem? But I had done something to upset him? I didn't want my friend to feel bad because of me. He just had to let me help. 
Did I do something wrong? He shook his head quickly, but remained deep in thought. Suddenly, he genuinely shifted his attention to me, finally looking me in the eye. It was progress already. No, I don't blame you. Blame me for what? It seemed that I was somehow connected to his problem, that he wouldn't tell me the whole truth. He looked away and remained silent, as if he had nothing else to tell me. I wasn't getting any more answers from him, at least now. But it's okay. I would never force him to tell me something about something he didn't want to share. It didn't bother me that much. The amount of time he needed to slowly trust me more and more. He was already more honest with me than when we first met. I was looking forward to the day when we could finally speak openly to one and to one another. Aww, that's so sweet. All right, let's see if we can uh, skip ahead a little bit. Uh, we're gonna stay at school for longer. The moment I heard the bell ring, me and the end of class for the day, I packed my books, cement bag, and left the classroom. I was gonna go to my club soon to participate in the daily ritual. Except this time, the meeting itself wasn't the only thing I was looking forward to. Even after my recent talk with Shin. I was wondering if he was going to open up to me more this time. While walking through the corridor, I saw Tara walking alone toward the staircase. He must have heard me coming as he turned his head to face me. Oh, hi, Oka! His cheerful greeting caught me off guard. This must have been what hanging out with normal people was like. I haven't seen him since before school, though. Was he treating me like a friend already? Hi. Do you have plans, or are you free right now? I couldn't make up my mind about Taro. He was really nice. Because if you are, we can walk home together. How about that? Uh, no, we gotta go to our club. We have to summon a demon. Well, like I said earlier, I have to go to my club. Sorry. Goodbye, then. I hurried inside my club, only to meet Shin there. He was alone, lighting the candles in the middle of the room when I entered. The moment he heard the door open, he looked at me and smiled faintly. I was worried you wouldn't come today. I stepped closer to him, grabbing another match up and finish. Aww. Crouching, I began to light the remaining candle. My eyes couldn't leave my hands as I focused on the task ahead. I saw his smile fade. I have my doubts about that. He looked at me again. But you're here now. That's what matters. He was hiding something from me. And I was glad he was at least willing to talk. I finished lighting the candles and stood up. The club meeting on without any more surprises. We gathered together, performed the ritual, and when we were done, we left. I watched Shin as we separated by the school entrance. A sigh escaped my lips. Was this the beginning of something new? Oh, that's so cute. All right, let's see if we can skip ahead a little bit. Uh, another day at my school. Despite what most students said about it, I like coming here every day. In my club. It was my favorite place here. I was almost anxious to find peace and comfort inside once again. A sense of belonging somewhere. Having people to care about. It was all I needed to be happy. I still couldn't fully really understand what happened with me entirely yesterday. In the morning, I simply talked to him. And he already thought I would want to spend time with him. He seemed almost desperate for company. I felt a bit sorry for him. For the needs of a single person mattered less than my duties for my clubmates. I couldn't just abandon him to be with someone I'd spoken to for, for the first time ever, right? I sighed as I looked up at 
cherry trees threatening the school's entrance. And then there was Shin. I could deny it all I wanted. But he was the reason I didn't want to be with I didn't want to be with Taro yesterday. There was some sort of emotional attachment to him in my heart. And I knew I wouldn't want to spend time with Taro because of it. It almost feel like betrayal to me. Despite my doubts, I gained a school I gained a school full of hope for the day ahead. No matter what would happen, I would find what I wanted in my club. Drawing a breath, I stepped onto the school's bright floor. Oh, now at lunchtime. When I came to the club room, it was empty. Except for Supana and Kokuma. They were sitting together in the middle of the room on the pentagram and chatting. I heard the voice of Supana saying, No, you don't get it. They are. When they saw me, and they both looked at me and Stepana stopped talking. Hey, Oka! What's up? Hi there. What are you doing before I came in? Both of them looked at each other, seemingly confused. Well, it's hard to explain. Oh, 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 we have to ask her. What? No. Come on, Kuma. You know I hate you using that nickname. But it's too cute. Kokuma only scoffed when I sat down next to him and listened to, 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 to listen to Stupana. So I'm not, not really dry from doing the voice. <laughs> so me and Kuma have been sort of arguing. Or were we? About what is the best shipping in our school? Oh my god, y'all are shippers. Do y'all ship me and Shin together or something? Please, give me the deets. Oh, Stepana and her shippings. <laughs> I got used to her unusual interests already. <clears throat> and I thought we would ask you about it to prove I was right. She stared meaningfully at Kokuma when she said her last words. He merely looked back at me. So... Who were you two arguing about? Well, I said that obviously Pippi and Ryota are the best couple at school. But they're not even... That's the point! And everyone knows they have a thing for each other! But that's so boring. What do you mean? I think Kokona, Haruka, and Sakamiyu are a much more interesting choice. <gasps> She's into Yuri! Oh! Someone be spilling some tea up in here, girl! Alright. What's the tea on this one, girl? I want to know everything. Please. Uh, who even ships that? They're both... Hey! Stepana! Shut your, shut your pie hole! Kakuma knows what's up. She likes the girl's ship and... Like, girl ship? Boy ship? Hetero ship? Well, any kind of ship, as long as it's not incestuous. <sighs> or gross. Or awkward. Or really creepy. Hey, I had to decide, right? And they nodded at me, and I was faced with a choice. I prefer. Um. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> what? I love her stockings with the little purple bows. They're so cute. I want a pair of my own. Um, <clears throat> I gotta rep my LGBT, uh, friendos. So I wanna pick Coconut and Saki. I think Kakuma is right about C Coconut and Saki. And there's something going on between them. Really? Ha! <laughs> I knew it. Ew, you two are weird. This is the girl who's in the occult club. This is a room for weirdos and, and freaks. So, hey, don't be, don't be knocking something you haven't even tried. Besides, I myself am strange and unusual. I smiled, seeing Zupana's reaction. Kakuma seemed to be enjoying herself, just like I was. And she was always so reserved, it was good to see her laugh. We sat there cracking jokes and chatting about school with other students. I almost didn't see the other club members come in. 
Of course, I would miss the moment she appeared in the room, looking at us curiously. I turned to look at him, but he took his seat with the others, ignoring them completely. There was a certain look of bitterness on his face. How strange. Aww. The bell rang. It mean the end of classes for the day. I had to hurry up, pack my books, and say goodbye to my teacher before I left. After descending the stairs, I was inside the club room again. Then I found Shin there. Everyone else was been busy with schoolwork after class to come here so early. <clears throat> it seemed like they had, he hadn't noticed me either. He was standing close to the center of the room, looking absently at the wall in front of him. Lost in thought, most likely. Slowly, I took a step into the room and stood a few meters away from him. The room was still kind of dark. Hi. Hearing my voice, he turned to me. Almost surprised to see me here so early. But he hid his feelings well. It was almost impossible to tell. I I'm sorry if I disturbed you. It's your club after all. I could tell he wasn't being completely serious, but there was a certain uneasiness in his voice that I hadn't heard before. Was he hiding something from me? Are you is everything all right? I took a step closer to him, trying not to scare him off. A single word said wrong to him could mean closing up completely. I knew that. I didn't want to risk it. Of course it is. His, hes his hesitation was enough to give me the answer. I was trying to look at him directly, but he kept avoiding my eyes. Something was wrong and he wasn't going to tell me what. Should I leave you alone? You should. I hardly ever had seen him this tense before. There was no point trying to ask him about it further. His response was clear enough. As I was trying to leave him, he stopped me. Wait. I didn't mean to sound rude. It's okay. Really. I gave him a genuine smile, letting him know I meant it. I wouldn't dare interfere if he wasn't asking me for help. I sank into one of the chairs. I kept staring at him. But truthfully, I wanted to help somehow. But I knew it wouldn't be helping if I forced him to tell me. He had the right to keep some things hidden from me. I was just hoping it wasn't something that brought him pain. I wouldn't stand and see him suffer because I couldn't help him. The rest of the day was fairly average. Our club's meeting went well, and we went our own ways afterwards. Except this time, I was almost disappointed to see Shin and I separate after exiting school. I had no idea how, but those past two days made me grow fond of him in some way. <clears throat> I was hoping to see him again tomorrow. Aww. So we can skip all this, because it's already starting to get to like the creepy part. I'm gonna go with the vision of the future. No. I wasn't naive enough to just let it go. I was sure what I saw was a vision. But was it possible that I was really going to die? I didn't want to believe it. But I've had visions before. And they usually came true soon afterwards. I learned from them that some things were just supposed to happen. No matter how much I try to stop my visions from becoming reality, the pure chance they usually did. I could only hope it wasn't one of those. There must have been a way for me to save myself from this horrible fate. Either way, I'd have to be really careful about how I spend my time today. I should use it well to save myself from this. I knew only one person could help me explain this vision and prevent it from coming true. Shin. I had to talk to him tomorrow, as soon as possible. <clears throat> he could help me, and I knew he would. Because if I wouldn't find a way to stop this madness, I would die. 
I shook my head, trying to dismiss the horrible thoughts of death. I had to try my best to sleep, to keep myself from thinking about it any further. In the same way, like literally, <clears throat> I went down and had to keep myself from gasping aloud. A black, thick looking bruise was right where the hand of the nightmare had touched me. And worse of it all, it was shaped like a hand with long, thin claws that seemed to tear into my skin and cover my whole shoulder and some of my upper back. Quickly I covered it with my uniform, but the pain kept reminding me I had been marked. And it was just a warning. My vision was real. I really had to go to my club. Maybe lunchtime would be the best time to do it. Now I had proof that my vision was real, and I had to act. Telling Shin about my vision was the only way to explain it. I couldn't do it on my own. I looked up at whoever was behind all this and prayed. Shin, save me. Oh, this is getting spoopy. <clears throat> Sitting in my classroom, I realized I needed some sort of plan for today. Once the bell had rang, I should already be prepared to act. I didn't have time to waste today. I had to talk to Shin immediately after classes end, at lunchtime. Only he could understand, help me understand the cause of this vision, and find ways to, to prevent it from coming true. If there were any, bell rang the moment I made up my mind and left the classroom in a hurry. Once outside, I began to look for Shin immediately. He was still there. Surely he was. I saw him right outside of his classroom. Without hesitation, I approached him. Hi. He noticed me, but didn't answer. When we reached the staircase, I stopped him. Wait, I need to talk to you about something. It's important. What is it? I looked around us. There are so many students in this hallway right now. I can't talk about it here. Too many people could hear. He nodded, understanding what I meant perfectly. Follow me. We arrived at the rooftop, just a spot quiet enough for nobody to hear our conversation. Why did you want to speak with me? My vision. I had to tell him about it. There was no point in hesitating now. I had a vision last night. I looked up at him, hoping to see his reaction. He was watching me closely, listening to my words. I could tell I had his complete attention. <clears throat> I was at school next to the club room. Something was chasing me. I paused. It was terrifying having to talk about something like this. Did you see anything else? I... I died. Silence followed my words. There was nothing left to be said about my vision. And I couldn't find the words to tell him anymore. Shin was silent. Most likely at a loss for words as well. I couldn't blame him. Hearing about my death must have been as terrifying for him as it was for me. I thought there was a vision that I'd be killed today. I couldn't say anything more. I couldn't. My own words were choking me. I could barely breathe. Please, tell me I won't die today. I don't want Die. I looked up I looked up at him desperately, hoping to see any emotion at all. Hoping that, to see that I mattered to him, even if only a little. Oh God, you will not die today. That's a promise. He promised. And how those few words do you feel? Hopeful in a way. 
Surviving this day didn't seem as impossible as it did before. How can you be so sure? I keep my promises. Always. I wanted to say something more, but the bell was soon to ring, and I feared I wouldn't have enough time. We were about to leave the rooftop when we saw the Batsu sisters on the way to the staircase. The succubus and the vampire. They disgusted me. There was a part of me that feared them. They looked at me, but after glancing at Shin briefly, turned away. I was glad I was al wasn't alone with them. Those girls. You were right about them. What do you mean? There's something about them that feels wrong. He was right. Something ominous was going on. We stopped next to my classroom. And thank you again. For everything. I'll keep an eye out for you today. And with that, he was gone before I entered my classroom. And suddenly felt so much more vulnerable. I had to admit, talking to him made me feel a lot better. It helped me. But on top of that, it made me feel like I, like I, I could survive. His support was all I needed to stop feeling so paranoid. I was hoping he could save me. Oh, nice. <clears throat> All right, let's see what we can do now. I was anxious about one thing, though. Clean school, and I wouldn't have time to attend the club meeting. I really need to know something more about my vision. Maybe I could pass through there while cleaning. And I wouldn't raise suspicions, would it? I felt like I needed to speak to Shin after I was done. He could have learned something important about my vision, and to be honest, his presence alone has made me feel safer. Alright, skip ahead. I hadn't seen anything unusual or paranormal, which was making me a bit calmer. I was almost on the second floor, and I just had to... <gasps> I felt someone push me from behind. I tripped on the stairs and fell down. Oh, we've already seen this part. Skip ahead! Ugh. The stuff was came ever closer to me, making me catch my breath. What was she going to do to me? I closed my eyes. Whatever was going to happen, and there was no way for me to stop it. I just had to wait, like I always had. Suddenly, footsteps could be heard somewhere in front of me. Loud, quick paced footsteps. The succubus froze. So did her sister, looking at the person approaching us. Saki let out a groan as she was suddenly pushed away from me and fell to the floor behind me with a loud thud. I heard her sister gasp in panic as she ran after her sister. Touch her again. And you'll regret it. Getting aggressive, aren't we? Saki, there's no point. There's no reason to fight over this. Get away from her. Now. I won't say that again. Those damn cult freaks. Come on, Inky, let's go. Right behind you, sister. And just like that, they were gone. And I could finally look up. Shin was standing a few meters away from me, watching me in silence. This was the first time I'd ever seen him so aggressive. I was almost scared, but he did the right thing. After getting up, I approached him. He spoke up before I could say a single word. Are you hurt? No, they didn't do anything to me. But I was still shaken after what just happened. They could have. Well, what do you mean? I barely heard his response. I should have known earlier. I should have stopped him. What? He just gave me what would have likely be a terrible mess, but 
don't blink himself. And there was nothing more you could have done. And you saved me. You may be right. What? He'd always been so stubborn. How strange that he agreed with me this time. It had been an odd change in the way he'd acted around me for the past few days. I wonder if why that was. It was almost 6 p.m. I should leave the school soon. After finishing my work, I looked at Shin curiously. Didn't you go to the club meeting today? He looked away from me for a moment. I didn't go. Really? As far as I knew, he never went to club meeting before. I thought my time would be better spent with you, given the circumstances. Wasn't that pretty much a confirmation that he was stalking me this entire time? How could I have failed to notice him? I couldn't blame him for it, though. He made the right choice. Who could have saved me if not him? Once again, thank you. I mean it. I was so focused on talking. I didn't realize we were already outside. Do you even want to come with me? A moment of silence as I considered my words carefully. If it makes you any safer, then yes, I do. I was happy that he had excuse to walk home with me for once. While walking, I didn't look at him much. Merely being with him made me feel so much better. He underestimated the effect he had on me. It wasn't even about doing something in particular to help me, but rather knowing he was right there for, with me. There was hardly anything that could be compared to how happy he was making me. I only wished I could stay with him for longer. But I knew we both had our own lives to live and things to take care of. We stop next to my house. I hope I'll see you again tomorrow. It wasn't a question of if I'll be with him or not. Rather, the question if I'll come to school tomorrow in the first place. His expression became just a bit more human when he looked at me. Something about him was changing very quickly. And I had no idea what or why. I hope so as well. Once I was safely inside my own house, I saw him walk away, fully disappearing behind the buildings by the street. I was exhausted after today, but I was still alive. And it was all that mattered. Oh, let's go ahead and skip this and see what happens, cause this is getting really good. Even though nothing happened to me me yesterday, I still wanted to avoid danger at all costs. I s oh. I should go, go to my club immediately. There, I, sh I, sh I could continue re my research about the vision. Sorry, as I said before, mouth is dry. I need to get some tea after this afternoon recording this. <laughs> when I got to the club room, I saw the door was still locked, so none of my clubmates got here yet. I searched inside my bag for the key, but I couldn't find it. Why did I forget to bring the key the day of all days? What should I do then? If I couldn't continue my research, then maybe the only option was studying. I decided to go upstairs near my classroom, hoping to find peace there. Recently, I had paid m as much attention to schoolwork as before. It would be good to revise my knowledge before today's classes. When I reached the third floor, I was suddenly struck by unbearable pain. We already know about this part. <laughs> Wait. I was physically seeing other people's auras. Something I could always feel instinctively, but was never sure of unless it was completely dark. I was wrong before. They could only be white and black, but if there were only two colors, what, what do they mean? I never really thought about it. I just knew it was better to stay away from people with a dark aura. Fascinated by my new power, 
I looked around again. What did my own aura look like? Look like? I had to find out. I looked down and saw only gray. I was almost transparent. I had no idea what an aura like this meant. Interesting. I never encountered something like this or read about it anywhere. All right. Let's look at it. Uh, let's try to recognize the two shadows on the first floor. One of the shadows, the running one, was the girl. I couldn't see her very clearly, but I noticed that she was doing something suspicious. Running around like that? What was it, what exactly was she doing? Oop, we found ya, John! She stopped to look at her phone. Or so it seemed. I decided I wouldn't get any more answers about her. As for the other figure, I couldn't see them well, but it somehow seemed familiar. Taking a step forward, I felt like I was floating above the floor. Like the floor didn't even exist. Alright, let's skip it. Uh didn't move an inch. Her fingertips brushed against my face so softly. I shut my eyes. Okay, we can skip that because we weren't even able to like do that. It felt like an irresistible force was holding me in place. Taking away my free will, my ability to run away. And this force didn't come from this world. I was sure of it. Oh boy. I tried to move, but my exhausted body didn't let me. Oh boy. This is getting scarier and scarier. Oh no. Nobody to save me. I felt so vulnerable then. I felt over two hands grab my wrist, painfully strong. The hands pulled my arms, started driving me through the corridor, as if I weighed nothing. Barely even conscious, I didn't have the strength to resist. I knew exactly where they were leading me to the occult room. As I passed the warm rooms, I slowly, slowly became aware of what, of what was going to happen to me. Soon, so soon, my life was going to end. It's almost over. Was I really going to let them kill me? How could I just let them? I stood no chance against them in a fight, but I had nothing to lose. We're going to struggle. I knew I didn't stand a chance against them. All I could do was hope my entry quickly be painless. I thought about Shin. How he tried to save me from his terrible fate. He failed. But I would never forget the hope he gave me. Even if it was for a short time. I couldn't stop the tear that fell down my cheek in my recollection. All those memories I was so fond of. People I cared about. I wasn't even 18 yet. Was it really just for my life to end so quickly? Either way, what was I supposed to do about it? I was hopeless. I could only wait for the end to come at last. I closed my eyes. There was nothing I could do but wait. Drawing a deep breath, I let my mind drift away from the monstrosity that was about to occur. There was no point in thinking about the pain. I paid no heed to what the hands were doing to me. It would be over so soon. Suddenly everything stopped. I couldn't feel pain. I couldn't feel anything anymore. And everything was silent, and then I saw only endless darkness. Oof. Oh boy. Fast forward. was the key to keeping my school safe from all the ghosts. Am I performing the ritual every day? Am I strengthening the barrier between the living and the dead? 
How could I have not realized this until now? I've been studying the occult for years, and it never occurred to me before. I felt like I had a mission to accomplish. Despite everything I'd seen in this vision, I would have to do my best to prevent more deaths. Yep. Ooh. We're in the nurse's office. The nurse didn't pay much attention to me. And she probably hadn't realized I was awake. What happened? I was conscious and barely alive. But my previous injuries disappeared. Were they part of the vision? Maybe I was never in the occult club today and passed out near my classroom when this all started. There was only one way to find out. I had to ask someone about it. Though, I doubt the nurse would be much help. Maybe my clubmates knew something about this. Either way, I was wasting my time in the nurse's office. Excuse me. The nurse turned around to face me with a surprised look on her face. Oh! You're awake! She walked up to me and tried to lay me back down, but I didn't let her. I was already up the moment she reached my bed. I'm fine, and I really have to go. Dear, you've just woken up, and you have bruises all over your arms. Bruises? So the hands left marks after all. You've been here all day, and now you just want to leave? All day? That means... What time is it? 3.50 p.m., sweetheart. You have no reason to be in a hurry at this hour. I'm sorry. But it's really important. The nurse sighed in defeat. If you say so, but if you need anything, come see me anytime. Thank you. I left the infirmary quickly and was startled to see someone I wasn't expecting to hear. Shin, what are you doing here? He was leaning against the wall opposite to me and watching me. Waiting for you. So he knew I was here, and then he must know what happened to me. Let's go to the club. I can't miss the ritual today. He began to walk through the hallway, and I couldn't help but notice that he was quieter than usual. Is... is something wrong? I won't talk about it here. So there was something you wanted to talk about. Could it have been my vision? To my surprise, I didn't go to the club, but passed it in a short, passed it and stopped in a short hallway behind it. He looked at me as if he wanted to pierce my soul with his gaze. What happened to you today? Was it your vision? I was speechless for a second. I did tell him, but. I didn't know he'd already made the connection. It was. Drawing a breath, I wondered how much I, sh I should tell him. I knew I could trust him, and I had no reason to lie to him. I just had to say it. I had another vision today. I glanced at him and saw that he was silent, listening to me. But before that, I saw the auras of everyone at school. For once, he looked surprised. Auras? Are you sure? I nodded. It's not the way we previously thought. They're black and white. And there are only four people with a black aura at our school. The Batsu sisters. Two others I don't know the identities of. I was lost in thought for a moment. What happened then? There's a ghost in the girl's bathroom on the third floor. You've seen it? It nearly attacked me. I didn't even wait for his response and continued. And then I was in this hallway. I saw hands. They had long claws and were pitch black. He was either too shocked or too preoccupied by his own thoughts to say anything. So I went on. They attacked me, dragged me to the club, and tore me to pieces. 
I could barely control my voice, but I knew I had to tell him everything. Then everything went dark, and I had a vision. I saw so much death. Murders committed in cold blood. Here, in the school. I froze for a moment. It might have been the first time I'd seen him genuinely shocked. I wouldn't believe it myself if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. When did they happen? I can only guess. Many years ago. Maybe in the 90s. Uh, try 89. 1980s. When Ryobo was still at school. And yes, this is going to be an hour long episode. There was one more. I looked around quickly to ensure nobody would hear me. I saw Kizana Zenobu's murder last Friday. My voice was lowered to almost a whisper. This had to stay between us. And the killer is still free in the school with us. He was silent, but his face showed no sign of emotion. Did you see their face? No, but it's a girl. Though it still eliminated half of the school's population as suspects. It wasn't much. So I recall what I wanted to ask him for a while now. Looking at him, I wondered. He clearly knew about me passing out. But how did he learn about it? He found me. This morning, he must have been the one who brought me to the nurse after my vision. I was relieved that it was him and not someone else. But I had to confirm it. You found me in the morning and brought me to the nurse. Shin took a step back, away from me. At that moment, I realized what I just did. I finally managed to catch him off guard. I saw, even if for a moment, what he was really like the all behind beneath all his walls, his masks. He was so much like me, afraid and insecure. He was pretending all the time, but he didn't want to be hurt like I was. I never realized before why he acted like the way he did, but now I understood. And it was a fascinating discovery. You're correct. And just like that, all I just saw in him was gone. He looked away from me for a moment. Suddenly, I let out a hit. Pain in my arms came back. Are you hurt? It's nothing serious. I have bruises on my arms since the vision. For the first time, he stepped a bit closer to me and reached out hesitantly. He stopped before his hand could touch my wrist. Can I? I could do this on my own. Slowly I slid the fabric down my arms until I could see the entirety of the bruises. Looking down at my arms, I was barely able to keep myself from gasping out loud. Black marks covered all the skin from the wrist up. They looked like stitches or claw marks. Letters. What? I looked at the mark closer and noticed they resembled a word. I began to read out loud. H. E. Air. Air to what? Before I could say anything, pain ripped apart my skull and apart again. I saw a dark figure standing before me, just like in my vision. When I opened my eyes again, everything was back to normal. I looked at Shin again. He knew what I saw was. I took a small step closer to him and lowered my voice to a haunting whisper. I saw your aura. It's black as night. I saw the horror in his eyes when he heard my words. We all knew this. A dark aura meant nothing good. It could attract evil spirits. Or worse. 
trying to settle with a black aura in the club was begging for trouble. But I didn't want him to leave. I know it's dangerous, but please don't leave the club. We need you. I need you. I had it silently. I couldn't imagine the club without him right now. He was the only one I told about the murderer. He had to help me find out more about them before it was too late. I won't quit if you think it's safe. But if anything happens because of it, you will be responsible. I nodded. I was the club leader after all. We should go to the club now. It's getting late. I turned towards the occult club's room door when I heard Shin's voice from behind me. Oka. I turned to face him. What? Never mind. It seemed like he had something more to tell me, but I had a feeling I would learn eventually. Upon entering the club, I saw familiar faces. They all looked happy to see me. I felt welcome. I felt home again. After the club meeting ended, I went straight home like usual. Alright, let's skip this. Despite going to my club, I didn't get nearly as many answers as I, as I hoped to get. The only thing I knew I was it was Shin that found me in the morning. One mystery left, I suppose. He seemed oddly calm today. I was glad I could talk to him about my vision. I told him everything, and it felt great. Just, just being honest and talking about what happened. I've already trusted him once before when I told him about my vision yesterday. There was still one thing that bothered me, though. I told him about the killer I saw in my vision. And now that he knew that her, he could be in danger. And if the killer heard our conversation, she was already aware that both of us knew her secret. I can only hope she had no idea what happened today. <laughs> Alright, let's skip ahead. Oh, hey! Upon entering the school, I spotted Sakana by her locker and decided to say hi. Good morning, Sukana. She looked at me over her locker. She packed some books into her bag. Hey there. Are you going to the club today? Of course. Great. I'm almost done with the books. You're away from me, right? I nodded, and we walked to the club together soon afterwards. The club room was empty when we entered. Looks like we had the club to ourselves for now. I smiled and nodded. Being with Supana always made me feel more relaxed. We sat on the pentagram rug, rug together. It's good to have you around, Oka. Especially when Kuma is late so often. Kuma really was her best friend. But Supana could really hang out with pretty much anyone. Thanks. I just like sitting here and talking. Before I could finish. I heard the door open and my head snapped in, in the direction of the sound. Shin was standing by the door. His eyes were on me at the moment he appeared in the room. Sup? Supana was always the first one to talk. He only nodded to her and sat, ne sat next to us. I've been researching auras nearly all night. He really took it seriously. What do you know about this, Supana? Well, not much. There was a moment of silence when we all realized how little we knew. All I know is that they are black and white, no grays. And a black aura is very rare. But that's not right. People, people aren't just good or evil. She was right. This is maybe the aura is something completely different. But what? They are, and a black aura both means only evil. When there's no light, there's darkness. I took a moment to think about what he said. It couldn't be as simple as that. I refuse to believe that some people are purely evil. 
She hasn't met Trump then. Woohoo! And what about himself? Did he really think of himself as an evil person? Thinking about it, I felt even more strongly that it wasn't one's personality that affected their auras. Maybe it's not that simple. Maybe there's something we're missing. Assuming you're right. He still didn't believe me. What is the point of an aura, anyway? I... I don't know. But the fact that we didn't know an answer is that we should look for it. We had to be open-minded and ask the right questions. Otherwise, we would never learn the truth. Mmm... Let's see... I refuse to believe that black ore means evil. It can't. Or, we, we just have to learn more. Everyone in the club could help. Or, do you think that anyone with a black aura is an irredeemable monster? Oof. Oof. Triple oof. Even though Yandere chan is a heartless, uh, heartless girl that just wants her senpai and will murder anyone who tries to get near him... I'm gonna pick. I refuse to believe it. I've never been as sure as any, for, of anything, perhaps in my whole life, than this. He was not evil, but I knew it. He looked away from me, silent. But I could tell what he was thinking about what I was, what I just said. I wanted him to realize that he was wrong. I would never let him believe he was evil, especially not to me. The bell rang and we were soon forced to separate for now. Okay. Fast forward button. Our club leaders? What about them, Sivana? Oh. Did she just ship us or something? Sorry. It just uh, lied to me for a moment. <laughs> you know, for once I may agree with you. There seems to be something going on between these two. If you actually agree with me for once, that, that must be that must be something special. Did you see it the way they keep looking at each other? It's hard not to notice, but Shin's always been like that. What? I can't believe I didn't realize this until now. I think Oka may be slower than you. Oh come on! I'm gonna kick your butt for saying that crap. I still couldn't believe it. That Shin thought his aura meant that he was evil. I'd have to have a word with him soon. I dragged Shin out of the club. What do you want? Why was he being so mean to me? Was it because of what happened in the morning? Listen to me for once. You are not evil. I will never let you believe that. We'll learn what your aura means soon. But for now, you have to trust me. Why should I? I remember all those times I saw what he was really like. He brought me to the nurse's office yesterday when I was unconscious during my vision. I remember the way he looked at me like he really cared. There was only one way to convince him. He couldn't deny the truth. When I told you about my vision on Wednesday, I knew you really cared. You saved me from the Basu sisters when they bullied me. You did all you could to keep me safe. You brought me to the nurse. You waited for me outside her office after school. I trusted you when I told you about my vision. I couldn't stop talking to it, realize how much you'd done for me in over such a short amount of time. You didn't touch me without my, without my, without my permission. I could have lied to you about your aura, but I told you the truth because I could never lie to you. What I told you today was that I refused to believe you're evil. I was telling the truth. You can't be. After everything you've done for me, I kept talking. He was silent the whole time. He was looking at me like, like he couldn't believe what I was saying. Was it really that hard for him to see the truth? No. 
You can't be right. But I... Wasn't all I said enough to convince him? What did I do wrong? Shin, please. I don't believe you. No matter what you say to me. I left school alone that day. The wind felt so cold and harsh on my skin. Like the whole world turned on me suddenly. And just today and this morning, everything seemed so right. But what did I do wrong? Despite what happened with Shin today, I still had to learn more about his aura. I wouldn't stop searching until I find an explanation. And maybe things would go back to normal between us then. It was all I needed right now. Even if you didn't believe me now, I would do my best to fix this. Because I cared about him. And I wouldn't let him push me away. Oh. Yep. Give me a moment, guys. I'm actually going to go back and uh, try to pick a different part to uh, fix all this. So, uh, time magic, go. Okay. I figured out where I, where I went wrong, and I load up a new game, and I went through it, and I found, finally got to this point. It turns out I kind of went off to a bad route, so I'm just going to go on and add on to this. Uh, okay, let's go with, of course I believe him, he was telling the truth. Whatever his reasons, I trusted him and knew that he wouldn't lie to me. He only spoke in half-truths, but I was still better than lying. Right? Oh, come on. I thought to myself, why must I doubt everything he said to me? Shouldn't I simply trust him like a close friend would? The thing with our relationship was... We weren't exactly friends. I trust didn't really go both ways. Huh. <laughs> Alright, yada yada yada. I felt someone push me from behind. I tripped on the stairs and fell down. What was happening? Everything was silent for a while and I couldn't see anything. I heard footsteps. Painfully slow footsteps from right behind me. Don't touch her! Inky Fossil. She was a few meters behind me. And like the person standing above me was. Why? Saki's deep, feminine voice was calm as ever. She was always the one in charge of her younger sister. All the boys that liked her, and of me right now. She had anything she wanted because everybody was either too intimidated by her dominant attitude or too shy because of her extraordinary beauty. Alright, let's fast forward a little bit. I knew nobody would come to save me now. I was all alone. So alone and afraid. No. I wouldn't let them bully me anymore. I was sick and tired of them. I've had enough of you two. I struggled until Saki Basu let go of me and stood up. The two girls didn't seem as dangerous as I made them look before. What are you gonna do now? You don't have the guts to hurt us. She didn't. She had a point. That didn't mean I wasn't gonna let them bully me. I had to make a statement at last. Walking up to them. I grew even more confident than I was before. If you ever try to intimidate me again, I won't hesitate to fight back. Now get out of my sight before I do something I regret. Inky Basu looked as if she seen a ghost. But Saki pulled her back to the staircase to leave. You've won for now, freak. But keep your eyes open. As they disappeared behind the wall, I couldn't help but worry. Was Saki you threatening me? After putting the trash can back to where it was before I wanted, I wanted to leave the school as fast as possible. Not only was I feeling anxious about the of the nightmare and Saki's attack, I was also really tired. 
on the way outside of Fudge Shin leaving the school. Hi. Are you leaving the school? I nodded, wondering what was on, the, what was on his mind. Do you, you want to come with me? A moment of silence as we could say my words carefully. Actually, I don't have any plans. While walking, I didn't look at him as much. Merely being with him made me feel so much better. We see it as a force, let's fast forward. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow then. <laughs> that was so cute. Um, let's go to the club. I mean, can you be wrong, right? Actually, I don't know. Let's try someplace quiet. I decided it was the best thing to do in my situation. It was so early. I doubt anyone of interest would be at school right now. Recently, I had pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've already seen this part. Sorry. Alright, let's look at the Batsu sisters again. Their auras really were black. I wondered. Did it mean they were evil? I didn't think Inky was evil. Did her sister's dark aura affect her as well? Or maybe there was something that connected them both to some dark magic. I grew more confident that I should definitely continue my research about them sometime. Taking a step forward, I feel like I was floating above the floor. I feel like the floor didn't even exist. Alright, fast forward button! Uh, damn! It never lets me, like, get through it. Oh, oops, I need to go back. I actually found the back button right here. If this was a dream, I could do anything, right? That was how dreams worked, wasn't it? I struggled with all my strength and managed to push the hand of my mouth away. Another one tried to take its place, but I bit it. I wouldn't let them hold me in place again. But somehow I managed to kick the two hands gripping my ankles and break free with it for just a moment. I grabbed one of the hands in an attempt to break it, but I didn't, I noticed, didn't notice another one sneaking up on me from behind. Hanging on the floor. I felt the hands grip on my ankle. I felt something warm on my face. Was it blood? I was about to die. This wasn't a dream. It really was happening. And I made the wrong choice. Oh, hi there. Oh, we got the ripped apart ending. Ouch. Well, it's a good thing I uh, got a save file. And before I knew it, my back was pressed to the wall behind me. I looked up at Shin who was standing in front of me, about a half meter away from me. The air seemed as cold as ice. What the hell happened to you? Was he talking about my vision? Drawing a breath, I w wondered how much I should tell him. I knew I could trust him, and how I had no reason to lie to him. I just had to say it. I had a vision today. We've already seen all this part here, so... And then... I wanted to say something more, but I realized I had tears in my eyes for a while, and then I was crying, hiding my face in my hands. I felt my knees weaken as I fell down, my back still touching the wall. It was too much, too much to handle. I had to calm down. I couldn't allow myself to be so weak in front of him. You've told me enough. I can't force you to talk about something like this. His voice was far softer than it usually was when he spoke to me. I was surprised that he kneeled down in front of me if I could look him in the eye. I never would have thought he was capable of giving up. Especially when he had the information I clearly had. Thank you for trusting me. I got up slowly and so did he. And I recalled why I wanted to ask him for a while now. 
looking at him, I wondered. I really knew about me passing out, but how did he learn about it? Ugh. I'm gonna let him do it this time. You know, because I trust him. I could have said no, but I didn't want to. I wouldn't have opposed him if he hadn't asked. But it was still considerate of him for out task for my permission. I'm nodding silently. I watched him closely when he started moving the fabric that was covering my arms. His touch was far more gentle than I expected. There was something in his eyes the second his hand brushed against my skin I couldn't name. Oof. Alright, skip ahead. Let's not tell him. We should go to the club now. It's getting late. Oof, that was close. Dodge a bullet! He was so aggressive today. Thankfully, he managed to calm down before he'd done something he'd regret. But the sudden changes in his behavior around me were a bit scary to me. I was worried he'd get him hurt someday. It was still one thing that bothered me, though. I told him about the killer I saw in my vision. And now he, that, he, that he knew about her, he could be in danger. Oka, I have to ask you something. What? Could it be about yesterday? Yesterday you looked like you had vision. I need to know what you saw then. I didn't want to tell him. But I knew he was too stubborn to just let it go. I had to tell him the truth, even though I knew he wouldn't like it. I saw your aura yesterday. So dark. Oh my god, is that true? You have a black aura? He looked away in silence. I should have told him yesterday. He would have more time to think about this. I felt sorry for him. It wouldn't be easy for him to accept the fact that he had a black aura. Shin, please don't lose hope. Nobody knows what a black aura means. But how do you know? How do you know it's not dangerous to keep me here, in this club? We can work it out. Don't worry. I swear I won't tell anyone. Me too. What do you think it means? Don't black and white auras represent good and evil? What does my aura make me? A monster, that's what. He wasn't evil. And he certainly wasn't a monster. I just had to find the right words. Oh, crap. We're back at the crossroads here. Let's go ahead and save it, this version, right here. Because this version may have some better endings. Alright, let's see what happens if I fast forward. I... I didn't know what to say. What did I do wrong? You lied to me about my aura yesterday. How am I supposed to believe you now? It was true. But I thought he wouldn't want to know about his aura being dark. That he'd be hurt. I had my reasons why I lied to him, and he didn't understand them. How is it I have to tell you everything when you keep hiding things from me? I didn't mean to raise my voice. I saw him step away from me. All warmth was gone from his eyes when he looked at me again. I failed. I couldn't convince him, and now he blamed me for everything. You are not worthy of my trust. Oof. Well, good thing we have a look. good thing we have a save file. All right, let's see what happens if I do this one. Nope. All right, skip this one. 
Of course, we won't tell anyone why we are researching it. Shin did not look convinced. Oh boy. And still, I can't earn his trust. Damn. Well, I tried. Even for an hour. I mean, this is an hour long episode. I tried. But we still couldn't get through to him. I might return for one more go around, but I'm unsure. But we did get the ripped apart ending. Oh boy. Actually, I want to try one more thing. So, just give me a little bit, alright? Okay, after a little bit of tweaking, and I know I missed uh, recording some footage, mainly because when I recorded the footage, it got a little corrupted. So, I had to cut that part out, but now I'm here. <laughs> that nurse, Mujikina, I should go find her later. I knew I had to stay focused. A murderer was on school grounds. I have to be very careful where I spend my time, and with who. And generally, it's probably safer to be in a larger group than to stay with one person. <laughs> Boop! I decided to go check on her. I walked towards the door of the infirmary and knocked slowly. Maybe she wasn't at school yet. Come in! Oh, you're back! Do you need something? Are you alright? I just wanted to see you again. I really don't have anything better to do. Uh, oh! I didn't expect you to come back. No students leave. Just leave once they don't need anything from me. And there was something in her voice that worried me. She seemed so lonely. I wish I could convince her that I was different. That I really cared. I won't leave you. We have a whole day to get to know each other, if you want to. I would love that. I mean, if you'd want to, then... Well, what do you do here all day? By the way, I love the artwork that they made, that the person made from Muja. She's so precious! I do. My parents are always very supportive. Even when I said I wanted to be a nurse, you didn't always want to be a nurse, right? No, it was just the only thing I could do with how incapable I am. This wasn't right. She was a great nurse, and she cared more than any other faculty member at this school. Hmm. You really think so? Of course. I don't care what people think about me. You shouldn't either. If you think you can do something else, do it. I don't know what to say. I never thought about it like that. I just wanted to help people and they thought I was stupid. That I couldn't do anything right. And I believed them. I know a few people like her. She wants so badly to be useful to others that she completely forgot what she wanted. I always try to do the right thing. Not to the point of being what people wanted me to. I was sad that she wasn't appreciated for what she did. She was just a nurse, and yet I felt like she deserved much better. You want to do that for me? I don't think anyone's ever showed me this much kindness. I want to help. But we'll have to talk about it again at lunchtime. We'll have to begin soon. Oh, right. You had to study. About ten minutes were remaining until class, so I stayed with her until the bell rang. When I talked to her yesterday. I didn't expect her to be like this. I thought she was happy with her job. Her life. Turns out she wasn't. I would do my best to help her. Oh, that was sweet.
Now, this part's a shocker. I've seen how good this teacher's shippings are recently. You really have nothing better to do with your time, don't you? Seriously, though, teachers? When there's nothing better happening with the students, what am I supposed to do in the school? You know, there may be something more interesting going on. <laughs> what is it? I'm all ears. How about you being Oka with the substitute nurse that just hired? Where did that idea come from? I saw that nurse walking Oka home yesterday. That was pretty cute. I never thought you'd consider anything cute. Especially something like that. What are you talking about? That's gay. Hey, Zapana, using gay as an insult is not a good thing. You will get your butt kicked for that. And? Alright, alright, I'm just surprised. See? Kokuma knows what's up. Oh, that was so adorable. On lunchtime, I went to check on Muja. We talked a lot about being independent and following, following one's dreams. These two concepts seemed completely foreign to her. She said she only had one dream since she was a child, and it was to help other people. I tried to convince her that if she could help, it would still be herself. I'm not sure if she believed me. I bell rang the moment my teacher finished her lecture, and everyone left the classroom. I promised Moon should I be back after classes would end, so I headed straight downstairs. Before I could knock, I heard quiet sobs coming from behind the door. Was Muja crying? Why? I lowered my voice just enough for her to still hear me. Muja? It's Oka. Was something wrong? She stopped crying for a moment. No, it's nothing. Just come in. I didn't like the way that sounded. But I came in, hoping to learn what happened to her. I found her crying, sitting on the floor next to her desk. Walking up to her, I closed the door behind me and sat next to her. What happened? You can tell me. I, I've been thinking about what you told me earlier. About following my dream. But I just can't do anything right. Even when I try to enjoy what I'm doing. Or find something that makes me happy. She had to find her own path. That was the only way she'd be happy. And I would do whatever it took to guide her and support her. It's okay. I went through all of this. You just have to let me help for once. Even if you've always only helped others. And she was silent, but not as slowly, still hesitant. Do you really think people like me can be happy? I moved a bit closer to her. I didn't know how, but on those past two days, I felt a strong connection between us. Something was pulling me closer to this nurse, and maybe she felt the same way. What do you mean? And she was blushing a beautiful shade of pink. She seemed so scared, but I could see she was only nervous. Somehow I felt that actions would speak louder than words. I don't want you to leave me when the old nurse comes back. Can you promise me that? Oka, I don't think I can leave you alone now. Even if I quit this job, we could still be friends. I'll be sure to make time to meet you as often as I can. This wasn't exactly what I wanted, but I can be patient. Besides, being friends with her sounded like a good idea. And I couldn't wait to meet her after school sometime. Thank you. We should exchange phone numbers. We can stay in touch. You're absolutely right. We exchanged phone numbers and left to school together, like yesterday. I was happy that we would be able to meet outside of school. Full of hope for our future relationship, I entered my house and fell asleep shortly afterwards. Oh, that was so cute! Now I'm on the con- oh, I finished a conflicted route? What? Oh. 
Download sub if you like one of the characters. You'll get a chance for a good ending with them later. Oh, man. That was so adorable, though. I love it. So, I'm going to go back one last time and see if we can uh, change something else. Before I could hesitate, I wrapped my I turned toward Nusha and wrapped my arms around her. Oh, uh, oh, uh, what are you... Her reaction made my heart skip a beat. She was still blushing. Did she feel something for me, too? I pulled her closer to me and buried my face in her soft hair. I wouldn't let anyone use her again. And I wanted to be happy with her. Only with her. It's okay. I'm gonna stay with you. To help you be happy. Oka. I could hear a tinge of longing in her voice. She felt the same way about me. But I wouldn't push her. Looking at her trembling lips, I almost couldn't stop myself. But I knew she needed time, and so did I. I stayed like this for a while, but she didn't seem to mind. We left the school together, just like yesterday. The sun felt so warm on my skin. I was happy. Aww. Oh, I have Musha's ending! Oh, So we not only got the ripped apart ending, we got Musha Kina's ending. Oh, that was so cute! Oh. Y'all, I know this was an hour long episode, and I apologize for that, but I wanted to do something awesome. I thought we were going to get Shin's ending, but we didn't. We got the ripped apart ending and I didn't realize there was the Muja ending oh who knew Oka was actually bisexual that was so cool I mean we really tried to get Shin's ending but I'm up to do a little playing on my own in order to find out what I need to do to, do to get Shin's ending and then I'll make one final video doing that ending 100% and just wow, I'm sorry I had to skip a lot of it, but we've already went through it. And I just didn't want to make multiple episodes just for just for the just for this route, but wow. I love how Navy Pink put in that there was an attraction with Mujakina working Oka. That was so cool. I mean, I have no words. I literally have no words today, guys. Navy Pink is an amazing creator, and she's actually following me on uh, on here. And what's cool is she she knows how to really express the true feelings of each character that she writes into the story. I mean, sure, it's based off of a fan fiction, but still, it's amazing. She puts in so much time and effort, and she told me that not many people played this game and she was she just put this game on a long hiatus. But in my opinion, she should really like go back to it when she feels up to it and just complete it cuz when I saw this on her game jolt page, it was still in beta, but I still think it should be completely 100% you know, amazing. And it wasn't Angel Page, it was her Ichio page. What the hell am I saying? <laughs> Sorry, I'm still speechless with the ending I got. So, I'm getting out of here. I, I need some time to think, because it, it, this game just still surprises me every time I play it. I love it so much. I mean, I played the Midori visual novel by Stefano, but, but this one here from Navy Pink, she is so cool. I can't believe I, I, I can't believe those two amazing visual novel makers just make stuff like this, and it blows my mind. And yes, I'm actually be playing Stefano's original story when it comes out, 
on his uh, Game Jolt page. That's where I got that one thought from, whoops. Because <laughs> I want to put my voice behind characters that have meaning and depth and beauty and so much behind them. One of my goals someday is to voice a character, maybe an anime or a game. Just, you know, maybe soon I'll get that opportunity. <laughs> but it just takes time, like everything else in life. It's like a relationship, it takes time for it to bloom. For a relationship is like a flower, it starts off as a little bud. But with enough time and care and patience, that bloom will open and something beautiful comes out of it. Something that can last either an eternity or something that can last very little. But you never know. Life's crazy that way. <laughs> well, enough of me going off on a weird tangent. <laughs> We're going out of here, guys. If you liked this video, hit that like button faster than you cast a spell to the face. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe and notification bell to find out when I upload. Upload same time, same channel, 2 o'clock central, Monday through Friday. <laughs> I'll see you all soon. Mwah! Stay magical, my friends, and... Let your love bloom as beautiful as a flower, but give it time for it to grow first. <laughs>